All right, you can see I have the EM135 back together. So I've made quite a few modifications to this meter. If you go back and look at the video where I modified this Cassuntest ZT102, basically I made the same modifications to the front end of this meter. This meter was a little different in that it had two PTCs in series. That's not something you normally see, so I'm assuming if one of them were to break down, they were hoping that the second one would probably save it. And then for the high impedance leg, they didn't do anything for that. I've actually left that high impedance leg the same way that it was. Then I've added a resistor for the tack input as well as the drive side. And I've gone ahead and placed two mobs in there. I also added some shrink tube around some of the parts. Then I ended up cutting the circuit board a little bit more. And of course I added some Corona dope. I doubt that this meter would be as robust as this Cassun test that I modified. So my plan today isn't to blow this thing up. I'd like to use this for some future videos possibly where we're looking at different automotive meters and I would keep this for a reference for that but I would like to run it on our transient generator today. So I think before we do anything let's just go ahead and do a basic functional test of the meter. So let's just start with our voltage input. You can see the meter is set for DC and let's go ahead and apply our 5 volt input and you can see it's still reading 499. This should be 2.5 volts. This should be roughly 60 volts. Let's try it with AC. And this should be roughly 70 volts. This should be 2.5, except again it's an averaging meter. And the same with this. So let's try frequency. And again, this would be our AC coupled input at 60 hertz. That looks fine. And again, this is our 5 volt DC biased input. Let's just try it with our period. So again, this should be roughly 8.3. And this should be 50%, which it is. This is with our leads open. Let's just try them with a short. See no effect there. Let's just try it with our 1 ohm resistor. Again, this is a 1% part. This would be 100 ohms. This is a 1k ohm. Let's just try our 10 mega ohm. So you can see the resistance input basically works the same as it did before. Let's try the diode check. So again, this is with a short. And here's with a single diode. And again, this meter cannot read two diodes in series. This is the continuity test. And let's try capacitance. So we'll go ahead and clear this thing out. This will be our 150 picofarads. And one nanofarad. and 0.1 microfarad. You can see that's still working just fine. Let's just try temperature and again this will be roughly 500 degrees. And we can also display that in Fahrenheit. Of course for RPM we have to change the meter to the other inputs. So at 60 RPM times 60 would give us 3600 RPM with a two stroke or 7200 RPM with a four stroke selected. So we've gone ahead and selected the four cylinder engine. And again, this should give us 7200 RPM and 90 degrees of fueling. We don't have a good way to look at the ripple with this box, but I'm assuming if I put this to AC and enable our box, this thing should fail, which it does. Of course, you can see our voltage up in the upper right. Alright, so I've got the meter attached to our bench power supply. You can see it's set for amps. And let's just go ahead and turn this up. So there's roughly one amp, three amps. So you can see the current input is still working just fine. Again, I didn't modify any of that. In the first video, I talked about actually modifying that where I'd cut a trace. Unfortunately, I didn't even realize at the time that. This has a circuit to detect a blown fuse, and you may have noticed that in the video where it was displaying fuse. 
So unfortunately, I'd have to go back and probably redesign that whole circuit to make it a higher impedance drive. You know, I don't even know if I could pull that off. Again, we don't have the schematics or anything for the meter. You may remember in the first video where I had this connected up to our high voltage power supply that's off here on the left. At about 260 volts, this meter began to reset. So what I'm going to do is rerun that test now that this meter has been modified. Again, this is a averaging meter. So you're going to have to multiply this number by 1.11. So 288 times 1.11 is basically 320 volts. It's interesting, you can see it's not going through a reset, but it's switching back to DC. Right there. So the meter still has a problem with this. I'm not quite sure what the issue is. Normally when it goes through a reset, let's just turn it off. See how the display will all flash and then it'll give the beep. That's not at all what it's doing. It's actually changing from the AC mode to the DC mode. So I suspect that there's something going on with the firmware in this meter. Let's just go back to AC and let's try it at a lower voltage. Let's go up a little bit higher. Just take it slightly over 200. Right there she switched. So it looks like just over 240. You can see I have three separate clamps right now. These two are identical. This one's going off to our EM135. This one's going off to our Fluke 97 and so is this one. These two probes are made by Fluke, or Phillips. The top one is an inductive type pickup. This one is a capacitive type. See that marked under here? 1001 capacitive secondary probe. So the way I have this set up is our inductive pickup is being used to trigger our scope. And then our capacitive probe is used to collect our analog data. You can see our ignition is programmed for 6,000 RPM. And that matches with what the EM135 is displaying. Just looking at the signal with our oscilloscope. And if we zoom in, each one of these is an ignition pulse. So the reason that the 135 is able to even read this is because we're only getting one ignition pulse per cycle. Let me go ahead and I'm going to slow down the ignition. And you can see at 2500 basically RPM I have two ignition pulses. So this is at 600 RPM and now you can see we're getting seven separate ignition pulses. So while the RPM reading off the EM135 is stable, this is not correct and that's because of this multi-spark. Right, so you can see the ignition is set for 6000 RPM and that's what the EM135 is displaying. Right there you can see it's starting to reset. When we get to 40 PSI now, but that's enough to cause the meter basically to continuously reset. I'll go ahead and drain it back down. Again, you can see it's still reading the wrong value, but at least it's not resetting. 
I'm sure that we're coupling quite a bit of noise directly into the meter. Right to my left you can see I have the MetraHit Ultra. You can see we're currently at 6,000 RPM. So 6,000 again divided by 60 should be roughly 100 Hertz. And you can see we're close. Let's try moving it away. You can see it locks right in. Start getting it a little closer to the ignition. See, it does pretty good. Let's see if there's anything left in the tank. See, it's definitely causing some troubles with the meter. Again, keep in mind that this Gossin has been modified. There's actually an additional shield that I've added inside of this meter. Let's go ahead and bleed off the gas pressure. And say both meters are doing exceptionally well. I mean, the fact that they're basically laying across all these plug wires. You know, on the EM135, I have the wiring harness basically wrapped all the way through the plug wires. So here you can see I have our ESD gun out, and I have the meter attached to the DC output of it. And all I'm going to do is just turn this up. Let's just make sure that the meter can still reach the max 600 volts. And you can see it erroring out right at 600. So that still appears to be just fine. So as long as we have our test jig out, what I'm going to do is switch this to the pulsed output. Again, this generator will basically mimic the IEC standards. So what I'm going to do is apply five transients, both positive and negative. And let's just see if this will damage the meter. And let's just try our other input. So shouldn't matter. We should just be able to go through them all. And we'll go ahead and reverse the polarity of it. All right, so let me just go ahead and functional test it. Alright, the meter checks out just fine. I think what I'd like to do now is run it through some transient tests. So let's go ahead and get up to our test jig and give her a try. Unfortunately, I can see a problem right now. And that's that. The lead's coming off of the top. Yep. So there's no way that this is going to be able to connect the leads to the top of the meter. So what I'm going to have to do is just run this thing out in the open like this. Unfortunately, the leads that I normally use to test with won't fit down inside of here. There's just not enough contact where I'm comfortable that they're not going to fall out. So I'm using this other set of leads. I've used these in the past. So I've got the generator set for a 2000 volt peak with a 100 microsecond full width half height. And again, we're just going to give it five transients, positive and negative. 
and we'll go through each mode of the meter. Alright, let me go ahead and functional test this. Looks like everything on the EM135 checks out just fine. So this meter will at least survive a 2000 volt hit. Again, I'm not sure if it would have originally. I just didn't want to risk damaging the meter. I'm sure I could take this thing up higher and it would do just fine with the mods that I've made to the meter. But I'm not going to do that for this video. So would I recommend this meter even if it had the modification that I've made to it? Probably not. There's just too many problems still with the meter. Of course, the meter, I can at least measure RPM with it now. It'd be interesting to see how a better meter would handle those kind of conditions. There is a feature that I haven't shown you with this meter. So you can select store. And that will store it in the second one. If I hit store again, the third. So that I can do recall. So recall three. Recall 2, Recall 1, and you can see it actually displays what mode it was in and the value that I've stored. If you're taking a lot of different measurements and you need a quick way to just do some storage, that's kind of a nice feature. You can see the uh, backlight is nice and bright with this. It's got a little hot spot over here, but overall it looks alright. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the series. Again, maybe in the future I'll look at another automotive meter, and we'll use this meter as a comparison. Well, until the next video, later.